Okay. Let's begin in prayer. My Heavenly Father, for the people listening now today and for the people here and to the people that we're going to preach to out into the world, Lord, open their hearts, give them repentance inside them, let them hear your word, may they repent and become Christians, may all the world follow you, for the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. Amen. Now, seeing things through Christian eyes, and I'm glad we've got the two kids here today, okay, I'm going to tell you why, because as you grow up, people will try to make Jesus sound uncool. They will try to make Jesus sound like, oh, you know, you, you don't believe that old religious stuff, do you? Your friends, your family, they will try to make you see things without Christian eyes. We know what is right and wrong because we read the Bible. People will try to mess that up, change the way we see things. Deal with that. If that's the people next door, deal with that. Okay. So, uh, we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. Now, does that say that everything that happens to you will be good? It doesn't, does it? When you're a Christian, things are still going to go wrong, just like they were going to go wrong when you weren't a Christian. Do you want me to translate, or are you okay? Okay. Let's go to the next one. So, the Spirit helps our infirmities, our problems, our illnesses. God knows that we need help. The Holy Spirit is constantly there, knowing what we need. Okay? We know not what we should pray for as we ought. We don't know what we should pray for. Let me give you an example. I'm going to pray that I get this fantastic job. I've got a fantastic job at the moment, but I'm saying, as an example, I'll pray that I get, if I get that job, is that better for me? It might not be the best thing. We don't know what we should pray for. Maybe we pray that we're going to be with that person and that thing will end up in disaster. Maybe I'll pray for a wife and when that happens, I meet the most disastrous woman ever. Okay? We don't know what's best for us, but God knows. Okay? So leave it to Him. The Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. There are things going on in our lives that God is in control of that we don't even understand. There are situations ahead, pieces of the puzzle that we don't see, but it will make the big picture of our lives. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit. It's talking about God who searches the heart. Jesus searches the heart. Because he make intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So we go by, remember when Jesus was just about to go through all that suffering? He sits and he goes, God, first he prays twice. He says the first time, God take this cup from me, the cup of suffering. I know what's about to happen, I'm not looking forward to it. Then he prays a second time. Not my will, but your will be done. We see the difference there. Now, go to the next one. We know that all things, all things, all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to His purpose. God's purpose now God's got a job for you and we don't know what that job is yet that job is something that God wants you to do but how do we do that well God will lead us 
God will put that person. He needs us to say, but first you need specialized training. You know when you get these special forces? They're trained with guns. They're trained with uh, swimming. They're trained with things that train. You need this specialist training. So a mix of things will happen in your life that will make up you ready for this job that God has for you. Okay? Who did foreknow? He also predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. Before time, we were supposed to become like Christ, the image of his son. We were supposed to be Christians like Jesus. So, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Jesus is the coolest. He said, brother, sister. He was the first person to say that. Now let's go to the next one. They will work together for good. You're hungry and you come to my house and I say to you, there's some oil. Enjoy. Yeah. This is an event that happened in your life. But you didn't like that. But it was part of an ingredient that made you who you are. This is yeast. It's a fungus. If you ate this, you will be very, very sick. But do you make cakes with it? If you mix it with other things that happened in your life, it becomes you. The story of your life, the training you had for the special purpose that God has for you. This is actually what fat looks like and you couldn't have it. But what if God takes your life and he mixes it with some events, with some special situations, some near misses. Maybe you were ill for a little while. There was a guy and he was playing on a game. And the other guy on the game, because they're talking to each other on the game, the guy's in America. And that guy says, I'm, I've had a, I'm having a rough time. Thank you for making me happy. Thank you for cheering. Yeah. Never seen this guy. They're talking on a game. The guy says to him, do you believe? Do you believe in Jesus? He says, yes, I do. Can we pray really quick? Can we pray real quick? Yes. So they're talking on this game, praying over this game. And the guy says, I feel much better. There was a job. Maybe he wouldn't have played that game out. Maybe, it, but special training works together for good. What about bad things? Let's go to the next one. Here's a little lesson for you. Okay. <laughs> it's okay, brother. Don't worry. Just turn it off now. Did you know that the things that are in salt are both poisonous to you, but salt isn't? This is sodium. If you ate it, you'd probably die. <laughs> okay? This is chlorine. It is absolutely lethal. It's bleach. It's what we use in bleach. These are two bad things that happen in your life. But God can mix it together and make something good. Salt is actually good for you. Forget what you read in these papers and things like that. It's actually good for you. So, sometimes we question the bad things that happen. But the bad things will end up, it's part of your makeup. It's part of the bad things that have happened to you to make you good for a certain situation. I remember I was, I, was, I was mad because I lost this job. This job, it was just, I was so angry. I, I lost this job. It was such a, now I'm on double the money. If I kept that job, I couldn't do this job. We, we question the things that happen to us all the time. Why God, why? Why God, why? But here's the thing about that. 
God's got the master plan. He's got the big design. And he knows where you're going. You don't know. In 10 years' time, God knows where he's leading you to make you the perfect person. That's how it works. Let's go to the next one. But you can't take it straight away. You cannot, you wouldn't be able to accept, for, for some, there's a part in the Bible that says, I can only give you milk for now. Because the full word of God is too much for you. And that's how it is. If you, if you took too much on, this is what it'd look like. But if God prepares it in a way that is acceptable to you, it's easier. The Old Testament with the laws and the apostles, go to the next one, please. The Old Testament was too difficult to swallow for some people. They had to slowly, bit by bit, be instructed. Eventually, God came down himself to teach us how to act, to show us, look, this is Jesus. He acts like this in this situation. He's angry with this bad situation. He's nice about this situation. He always has faith. We look at that and we follow. Now God's given us an example for us to follow. Let's go to the next one. Okay. These are some Old Testament laws. Okay. Now they're the word of God. Now some people will have trouble understanding, some trouble following. But it's little pieces that make up the big picture. I'll show you. Thou shalt not see thy brother's ox or his sheep go astray, and hide themselves thyself from them. Thou shalt in any case bring them again to thy brother. If your brother has a lost uh, ox or, or something's lost, say your brother's daughter is having problems. Okay? It's having problems. We're going to need an extra chair for Costas. He's coming in now. Uh... Oh, we've got chairs. It's okay. I didn't see. <laughs> anyway. Come in, come in. We're the closed door Baptist church today. Okay. So, you don't hide yourself from your friend's problem. Okay? It's very simple. If thy brother be not nigh to thee, if thou know him not, even if you don't know your brother, if my friend, if one of your problems has come up, okay, I'm not going to hide myself from that situation. You shall not hide yourself, okay? Even if you don't know him, thou shalt bring it to your own house and bring it. So, if he's lost an animal, bring it to your own house, look after it. But that applies to many other things that your brother does, okay? You know... A lot of us, oops, a lot of us hide ourselves from other people's problems. That's not my problem, that's their problem. Now some people abuse that. Some people will use you to do everything. You know, make phone calls for them, make it, they will abuse this privilege. But this doesn't mean that, okay? The trouble of someone else, a brother or sister, is your trouble. When we were sick, when I was a kid, when we were sick, another mother would look after our children. Do you remember, down the road? Somebody would always look after someone else's children. And it's the same principle here, okay? Even if you don't know him, okay? That shall restore it to him again. So let's go to the next one. In like manner shall thou do uh, with all the things he has. With all lost things of thy brothers, which he has lost. If you see your brothers in another country and his family has need, don't hide yourself. Help that person. You have to get involved. Now it's very uncomfortable. You have to put yourself out. I have to give up 10 minutes of my time. To put myself out for this person. But I'm going to do it. Why? Because this is what God likes. 
thou hast found, thou shalt do likewise. Thou mayest not hide yourself. Don't hide yourself from a problem of someone else's. It's uh, very easy to do. We get caught up. I forget to do something. Okay? I, it's, it's, this is preaching to me as well. Because as a, a, a leader, I forget to keep an eye on the flock. I remember the pastor of the church before this one. What would he do? He wouldn't call me every week. He would call me once every two, three months. He kept an eye on me, but he did it without pestering me. He kept an eye. Let's go to the next one. Now, as you get older, especially the kids, okay? In school, they did this to my niece. They got her and they tried to brainwash the Christianity out of her. And I warned her. When you go, people will try and make you forget about God. They will make you forget about... And this is happening today. Male and female created he them. Well, there's not just male and female, there's... I'm sorry, the Bible is very, very clear. It doesn't matter what the world tells me, and the kids are going to remember when they get older. They're going to say to you, oh, there's many types of... No, there isn't. There's male and female. Now, I've heard a very disturbing thing, where in England, they have forced the children, the male children, to wear a skirt. And one, day a month. one day a month. In schools. Now, this is in direct opposition to the word of God. Okay? The woman shall not wear that which pertains to a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are an abomination to the Lord thy God. A direct abomination to God. It's not okay. It's not okay to watch a comedy show where, I remember there was a, remember we had Benny Hill when I was a kid. And it was horrible because sometimes you would dress up as a woman and I would turn it off. And you didn't need to do that to be funny. If you're a comedian, you don't have to dress as a woman. It's, uh, there's nothing funny about it. You're in direct violation to God. The same as dressing up a child as Harry Potter or something like that. It's not funny. The Bible is against wizards and witches and stuff like that. So I'm not going to dress a child. I've got a son on the way. <laughs> I'm not going to dress the sun as something that God hates. I'm not going to do it. Now, these are Christian eyes. We are seeing things through Christian eyes. And the enemy will try to cloud those eyes. He'll try and put these away. You know, well, you know, it's, that's an old book. And? Are old books wrong? No. There's wisdom in the Bible. Let's go to the next one. This is small little things, but this one's about being nice to animals. God had to tell the people to be nice to animals, okay? If a bird's nest chanced to be befalling away on the ground, whether they be young or eggs, and the dam, it means dams of female, uh, female chicken or female bird, okay? Thou shalt not take the dam with the young. Okay, it's, if you see, don't take a, a little bird's eggs away while the mother's there. Don't, you know, don't be horrible to an animal. It's not nice. Now, it's a small thing. <laughs> it's in the Bible. Christians, be nice to animals. You know, it's, it's not a very big thing. It's not something to, uh, okay. So you don't restrict the mother. He says, let the dam go, the dams will go out, and take the young to thee, that it may be well with thee. Have you ever seen anyone, have you ever seen anyone where a bird falls out of the nest and a person takes it and looks after the bird till it gets older? That's from God. That's actually in the Bible. 
take the young to you. If the nest falls down, the bird's nest, I mean, it's a small thing, but it does make you a better person if you're nice to animals. Somebody told me once, and I find this to be true, have you ever had a child cry when some, a certain person goes near them? You've had that, haven't you? How does the baby, there's like a sixth sense, that person's actually a bad person, I've noticed it. And the baby just cries for no reason when that person goes near it. And I've noticed it with animals as well. My, my friend said something to me, and he's got like 16 dogs. He says to me, if a dog doesn't like someone, it's because they can sense something bad about that person. And the dog will start barking at someone for no reason. It's got like a sixth sense that it knows that person's bad. These are things, there's amazing things, in, you know, that God's created. Let's go to the next one. If someone's animal, if an ox gore a man or a woman that they die, then the ox shall be surely stoned. Now we've kept this law today. If an animal bites someone, that animal gets put down. That's law because that's in the Bible. <laughs> They've kept the laws from the Bible and it's a good law. Uh, his flesh shall not be eaten, but the owner of the ox shall be quit. But if the ox will want to push, if the ox was pushing someone all the time, or goring someone, or biting someone, or attacking someone, the Bible holds the owner responsible. It says it, it's amazing. And he's not kept him in, but he has killed a man or a woman. The ox shall be stoned, and the owner shall be put to death. If I own a dog, and that dog attacks people, it's as if I am guilty of what that, that animal has done. It was my animal. Now this is the Bible, and it's very good advice. We see these things through Christian eyes. Let's go to the next one. Slavery. Now, slavery is, uh, I hate to pre preach in front of the children this, but what can I do? It's the truth of the Bible, and I, I can't do it. Can't help the guy. They tried to steal the bike. When the bike Bring it inside the church, I don't mind. It's okay. It's not from outside the church. <laughs> Bring it in. Oh, the taxi driver. Oh, right, fair enough. I'm very sorry. I thought stealing something from outside the church, that's a new low. That really is a new low. Okay, so slavery and trafficking in people. We have this today. Okay, now a lot of people say, you know, slavery is in the Bible. Yes, the death penalty for it. Okay? God doesn't want any people uh, to be slaves. So if you steal a man or sell him, or if he be found in his hand, if you own a slave, you're to be put to death. If you own one. Now, in the Philippines, Good news. There's a woman in the Philippines that's trying to bring back the death penalty for human trafficking. I don't know what her name is. I couldn't pronounce it. It was very weird. But she was a minister, one of your ministers. Okay? And so very good. She's trying to bring it. I'm not going to say this in front of the children, but we know what this means. Okay? There is a death penalty for false used on a woman death penalty okay this has to happen it's in the bible and if you don't follow this and that person gets out of prison they do it again i judge the judge to be at fault for this 
because he let him out. Again, it's the Bible and it's a good idea. Let's go to the next one. Now, this is love. I'm going to show you an example of love. Love is this, okay? According to the Bible, let love be without dissimulation. What does this word mean? This word means concealment of one's thoughts, feelings. Have you ever been around someone, but you're concealing how you really feel? Yes. <laughs> I wish I had that in me. I just don't. I wish I had that special, amazing talent. I just say things, you know, blatantly. You know, uh, no style at all. So, let love, don't conceal true, true love. Love is this, abhor that which is evil. I hate things that are evil, and I'm not going to try to hide it. David said to God, he said, how do I not hate them that hate thee? Yes, if somebody hates God, they hate his word, they hate his commandments, they hate God. Okay, I get away, I abhor, I do not want to have anything to do with something evil. I don't want anything to do with it. Okay, cleave to that which is good. Now, a member of your family may be in the wrong. Your wife may be wrong. Your husband may be wrong. Whose side do you take? This is the thing. If your wife has argued with someone and the other person's right, you take the side of righteousness. It doesn't matter who that person is. That person has to be like that. I remember I went into a place once and the, the owner of this huge company's son tried to cheat me. It was a, a, he charged me too much for something. And the guy that was working there said, why was he charged this amount? And I sat there, I thought, you're not scared of the owner's son. And he rebuked the son in front of me. And I saw justice. I remember that to this day, the hand of God. Justice came down. It was only a small amount. It was like five, five pounds or something like that. But I got to see it. And when you get to see justice, it's an amazing thing. It builds you up. It, it, it lifts your heart. When you see a bad person go to prison, you feel good. It's justice. It's good. You bore that which is evil and you stick with that that's good. Let's go to the next one. And we're coming to the end now. But as you see, Janus and Jambres withstood Moses. So do these people resist the truth. I was in a chat with somebody, a big group chat. And the person was desperately trying to push evil. He was trying to not let me see through Christian eyes. And I stuck my ground. This is wrong. This is wrong. This is wrong. Eventually the guy saw it. Because you have to stand your ground sometimes. You have to stick up for what is right. There is a time to fight, the Bible says. There's a time to do it. And, and if you sit there and you're wishy-washy and you're weak and you can't say the truth and you conceal how you really feel about this situation, you regret it. Afterwards, you will regret it. I guarantee you, any shame you feel by speaking the truth, you'll regret. So speak the truth. Let it come out of you. Okay? Okay, so that there are people that want to resist the truth, resist the Bible. Okay? Men of corrupt minds, reprobate concerning the faith. But they shall proceed no further. Their folly shall be manifest to all men, as theirs also was. So, the bad people get exposed at the end. Okay, their folly, their ridiculousness. Now, their, the folly is like, I think they're saying there's 33 genders. How many genders are there supposed well, to be? 100, 100 genders? Yeah. 30, 30 wasn't enough. No, we have 100. Yeah. 
What's number 99? I don't know, just curiosity. I don't know, there's something called free spirit gender or something. Oh, a free spirit gender. Yeah. Right, okay, right, okay. Okay, how many genders are there? Two. 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 We see through Christian eyes. Okay, this is how we see stuff. Okay, so their folly, their ridiculousness will be made manifest. Let's go to the next one. The evil men and seducers will wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Okay? Evil people, there was a guy called uh, uh, Stalin, and he was, uh, I think he, he did some very, very terrible things. <laughs> his sickness in his mind got worse and worse. There's people that are evil, I've watched them degenerate in front of my eyes. You see, evil people, they get worse and worse. We will, sometimes Christians feel sorry for evil. It's a terrible mistake to make. It is a terrible mistake. When you pity evil people and the punishments they're going through, it's as if you partake with them. It's a punishment from God. I watched, I've seen evil people that have done things to me and God has punished them with like, and I haven't felt sorry for them. But the mistake is to take pity on evil people. I'm not talking about lost people. Lost people take pity on them all day. Work as hard as you can to bring them to Christ. That's our job, okay? But there's evil people that know the Bible and they really do choose to do evil things. They choose to twist the scriptures. Well, there, there's another one. He became. Uh, he became. Yeah, he, be, he became very, very. His body, the evil that was outside, came inside. They did a poster and they put the Nazi emblem on the cross and said the cross wasn't heavy enough. That's what the Nazis did. <laughs> well, we remember that uh, the Germans actually shot Hitler <laughs> before he came to power. You know, they realized that Germany didn't actually want him. Did you know that? Yeah, they did that. So, <laughs> nobody actually wanted him. I think only 3% of the country, and he was paying them. So, we see that evil people get worse. Now, there was a guy taking me to court for 10 years. 10 years he was taking me to court. And he had 10 cancerous things come up in his body. And I'm thinking, Stop taking me to court <laughs> before God makes it worse for you. You know, there's a part in the Bible I didn't put it in. I wanted to, but you know, time constrictions. Don't avenge yourselves. Give place to wrath. God will avenge for you. Now, what does that mean? That means sometimes people will pick on you at school. They will say horrible things because they're jealous of you. They will say in your life. I remember they used to do it, it was always, usually girls in school. They would pick on another girl who was pretty and they would say, you know, you're horrible and you're, you know, because they were jealous. It's, it's usually one of those things. Men, they just tend to have a punch up. But we see that the people there, uh, if, you t if you pay these guys any attention, you've given in to them. They've won. Whereas if you just leave it to God, if I want revenge on someone and I leave it to God, I know that God will take revenge much better than I can. And I've, I've watched his hand on people. Okay? Continue thou in the things which you have learned and has been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Now this is, Paul is speaking to Timothy. Okay? He's saying to Timothy, you continue in the things that you've learned. Don't let the bad people in your life affect your life. Now I know people have done many bad things to you. It happens to everyone. People will hate you just because you're a Christian. They won't even know why they hate you. They just naturally inside them, they will hate you just because you're a Christian. Don't let that bother you. It's a waste of time. You continue in the things that you've learned. And you see things through Christian eyes. And you will see the difference. Okay? Uh, okay. 
So, we're going to pray now. And we're going to pray that the world, the Christians in the world, aren't moved by the world. I think that's the best way I can say it. For example, if, the, if 10 million people tell you that the Bible's wrong, should you listen to the 10 million people? It doesn't matter how many of your friends turn against you because they're not really your friends. <laughs> if they're turning against you because of your faith, they're not your friends. If they're resisting the truth, that's up to them. They can still be your friends, but they're resisting the truth of the Bible. And they will do that. They'll be lost and tossed about, the Bible says, with every new wind of doctrine. There's a new thing out, and we should all follow this new thing. That doesn't affect me. I see things through Christian eyes. Okay? And you just said as well, don't take it personally because they hated me before they hated you. Yeah, they hated me before they hated you. Could we go back to the cooking one, and then we'll end there? The slide with the cooking, the one with the five things. Okay? Four things. Okay? So, sometimes the things that will... Remember, the things that we don't think we should have happened to us. Okay? Because you're going to make mistakes. When you leave this church, you're going to make mistakes. I guarantee it. Okay? Today you're going to make mistakes. And don't sit there going, no, why did I do this ridiculous thing? You don't know if it was one of the ingredients that mixed to make up you. If you think that you should have said something that day, but you didn't, maybe that was what was meant to happen, to teach you for next time. If you did something wrong and that ended up ending a relationship, how do you know that relationship wasn't supposed to end? And that, that wasn't from God. The mix of bad things that can, God can mix and make a good thing will stay in your life. So when you leave here, remember, the past is the past. Forget it. You have a new body, a new life in Christ. All the things that have happened to you in your life mixed to make you today. And that's what it is. So let's, be, let's send in prayer. My Heavenly Father, I thank you that knowledge and wisdom come through you. I thank you that we move on from the things that have happened in our lives. That we give vengeance and the bad things inside us to you. We know that you will avenge for us. Lord, we trust you in all the things that you have said. We see things because we want to see things through your eyes. We want to be good people. We want to be good Christians. And we know it's hard sometimes. And we know that we will fall sometimes. But we know that we will get up and come back to you. Heavenly Father, bless everybody here, everyone listening, and the Christians around the world, the world to stay true to your word no matter what other people try to do. Blessed be your mighty name. Amen. Amen.